It is 9.37 a.m. and I have one trade with LCLP. This was, you can call it, a gap down morning panic bounce play. The previous close, as you can see, was 26. The sub penny level and it opened much lower and then it continued to panic some more. It got as low as the sub penny uh, 15 level and I did get in and it was a little nerve wracking because I got in the setup before it broke the trend line. As you can see, the downtrending trend line but you can also tell that once it broke the downtrending trend line it would have been very hard to be in at a reasonable price for a morning panic bounce play and now it looks like it's trying to uptrend some more but i honestly don't mind the way i traded it too much because it was a bit nerve-wracking again because i was in the setup before the trend line break it could have continued to follow the trend line and break and had even lower but it didn't do it and i had to take that risk for that reason and it played out it wasn't horrible, but again, I could have sold better. However, I just didn't like it too much. It was kind of weird. I was in LCLP, 50,000 shares at 933, and that was at 16. So 933 was right here. I was in at 16. It was a bit nerve-wracking. A few times it would just, you know, flick back and forth and look like it was going to break the 15 level, but they never did it. And then I did sell two minutes later officially, but I did have this... Um, this verified can so i did try to sell 50,000 shares when it started the uptrend at 18 at 934 but i was only able to get a partial fill i only sold 7,500 shares of the 50,000 i was trying to sell and again i was out that small amount right there and i just wasn't able to get all the shares out essentially the bid was 16 and then it got to 18 and then i didn't like the way it was trading so i decided to sell right there at 18 and then it would just get taken out and it's back at 16 so i only had a partial sell and then i did ultimately sell everything at 935 which was right here at 18 and it did get higher it did get as high as this 20 sub penny level and now it looks like it might try to downtrend i might just leave this one alone because it was kind of scary the way it was trading at first i didn't really like it too because uh, for example, you see it right now, 17 and 20. But the problem would be that even though it looks like it just uptrend, let's say this was at 16 and now it's 17 by 20. Well, it looks like this, but then eventually you see a bunch of green prints go through at 17 and then it wipes out 17. So like the level two was a bit um, sketchy in that sense. So that was another thing that was kind of against me, uh, I guess, holding on to it better potentially, but... I guess at this point it can try the whole VWAP and maybe it can try to uptrend over a longer period of time, but I don't necessarily want to trade it right now, but that was one trade that I had there and there isn't anything else that I'm looking at. DEGI could be a reversal perhaps at some point if it looks clean. SYXX, I don't want to trade this. It's a bit choppy. This one is potentially going to have a big red day if it wants to continue to sell with more volume but right now there isn't anything with that and yeah that's really about it i'll make an update later as of right now i just had that one trade with lclp it is 9 48 a.m and i'm currently in another setup with lclp and i really didn't want to trade it but the pattern looked like it was going to potentially do it so i only went in 10,000 shares which is um you know, a $16 position is so tiny, and this is essentially, I'm going to cut this if it looks like it's going to break under 17. This is a morning panic bounce play, also a gap down, and then this is the higher low off of the panic bottom, and I was in uh, just 10,000 shares at 942, which was at 17, and why did I get in? I liked how there was a 6 million share bidder at 16, and 17 had like 175,000 shares, so... I got in there for that reason. It got taken out. Now we're trading 17 by 18. We do have some big bidders that showed up at 17, but that doesn't mean 18 is going to get taken out, which is also VWAP. So I want to see if it can break 18. I sold half of my position at 17.5. It wasn't really 18. It was 17.5. At least that's what it showed. Actually, this might be me right there at 945. I did get out half of my position just because it wasn't really working. And I wanted to sell half just in case it ultimately fails. At least I'm not cutting the entire position for a loss if it happens, which again is a very tiny position. But 
again i just didn't really feel easy with the way this one was trading but i did see the pattern so that's why i was in it let's see if we can break 18 i will make an update as to what this one does i'm also looking at txtm this could be like a dip towards vweb setup if it looks clean i might try to consider it and that's really about it for right now maybe this could be something to be bought as well like a dip buy although i don't really like how i wish this up one day so i might actually just sell off and not do anything that's really about it for right now although this one was pretty cool obviously i want to be doing this if i had a full position size with lclp i guess this one already did the dip towards vwap and now it's at the 42 sub penny level so that's pretty cool I'll continue to be watching my setup, which, I mean, it seems like now there's another big seller at the ask, and I'll make an update later. All right, it is 10.09 a.m., and I did get out of LCLP eventually, and it looks like it's still trading back and forth, 17 by 18. I sold the last piece at 17 and a half. It wasn't 18 again, so essentially the entire position I was in at 17, and I got out two pieces two different times at 17 and a half and at 954 that's when i did call it off and get out of it why well the setup still could have worked out but i got out of it because of the fact that um i wanted to look at other setups it looked like there were other setups happening and i didn't want to be sitting here with this practice trade so i got out of it for that reason and the only thing i could have done better was that because this was a practice trade and i was trading such a small position I could have actually have kept this trade, watched it on the other screen, and then trade another setup that I was interested in, which was GEGI. Then I could be um, practicing where that, you know, I can be in two positions at the same time and I can try to learn from it, not having a full position on one of the trades. So that is something I could have done. I didn't think about it till later, but in the future, if I'm in that same situation, I might try to do that where I'm long two setups at the same time and I can try practicing that. So yeah, this one can totally try to break 18 at some point. It's just very slow. It doesn't have much volume. And I did trade GEGI, and you can see now it's 28 by 29. I got in GEGI 50, not 50, 40,000 shares at 28. That was at 1001. And 1001 was right here. I got in it at 28 because it looks like 28 was just about to break. And there was a lot of support at 27. And this might not really see much, but if you look at a longer period of time, it looks like something where it even had an aggressive move to 35, and then it came right back close to the bottom of this level right here, and now it can try to continue to uptrend and try a momentum shift, you know, towards the upside. So that was in mind looking at the chart right here. If you look at the daily chart, I like how it had a wick here, then it had a bigger wick, right? But now it's like a tiny wick, so maybe... This could be something over the next few days, and I'm just not able to hold on to it well enough for it to happen. But this thing could try to uptrend over the next few days, potentially. And that could be a super profitable trade, especially because it's priced so low, so it can be a big percent change. And I did sell half of my position at 10.07 when it wasn't doing anything. It was just sitting there, and it was barely trading. And I got out half of my position at 27 and i just didn't really like the way it was trading it was just taking forever even though there was like one person to get taken out at 28 kind of like the way it looks like right now and i got out of it i just didn't like how it was taking too long and all we needed was just some big selling price action to wipe out 27 and then that could cause like a pretty nice drop although it could catch itself at 23. i thought worst case scenario i'll try to cut it if it looks like it's going to break 27 and if i'm not able to get out right then and there at 27 i thought worst case scenario would be that it might try to hold itself um, around the 23 level and that will be a 20 dollar loss so i did trade the right amount of size and then i did sell the other half of the trade at 28 and that was at 1008 literally one minute later is when it finally started to um like take out 28 and then 28 starts to show up at the bid as you can see right now essentially it looks just like this actually this thing is copying the same um, level 2 price action where we broke 28 and now 28 was at the bid and that's when i sold the other half of the trade so i ended up being slightly profitable on this one it's just um 
yeah, it just didn't really work out when I wanted it to. And maybe I'm not giving it enough time. But I want to see what this one can do. If it can try to reverse over a longer period of time. And that's really about it. There isn't anything else that um, I'm interested in. Although I haven't had a chance to look very much. Because I've been watching these setups. I will make an update later. It is 11.33. This is a bit later in the day. And I want to go over two setups that I missed out on. And um, one of them was TXTM. This one really worked out. I was looking at it. Um, I think it was way back here. When we had that move from the sub penny 95 level. All the way to 117. And then it had a downtrend. And then it went under VWAP. And then it started to do the thing where it gets under a penny. And then it starts to work itself back past the penny and then make a move towards the upside. I was not too interested in it because it kind of looked kind of iffy the way it looked on the chart right here. It just didn't really seem like something that could really um, make a move towards the upside. Or at least it just seems kind of scary to consider it. But when you look at a daily chart, it does look a lot better, the idea. And I did hesitate. I could have bought at one penny right around here at 10.32. I just didn't take it. But... It did get as high as 11.2, which, let me just see. And I was considering 30,000 shares. Let's see what that would have been. 30,000 shares, $300. And then, I mean, best case scenario would have been, what, this 11.2 level. So, that would have made that a pretty profitable trade. And it sucks that I missed out because I hesitated. I could have at least traded maybe 1,000 shares right a practice size and then still be a part of the setup but i'm glad it worked out maybe next time in the future i will have that much more confidence to trade the setup and then the second one that i missed out on was uh this one right here evfm this one was breaking past 76 and i just got back to my computer and i saw it starting to make a move there i could have taken a trade but i actually would have had too much size which would have been in favor here because it's continuously uptrending more but uh this was a very nice breakout over the 76 level and i was watching it for a bull flag where maybe it kind of has an uptrend downtrends uptrends some more and then it downtrends and it does the bull flag but actually just held this level right at the highs and now it's squeezing pretty high so yeah, there was definitely a lot of room for more profitability today, and I think that's a good thing because um, at least it means I'm not maxed out and that's all I can do. But um, at the same time, I would have liked being a part of the other two setups, um, even if it were to have failed, just because it was something that looks nice. I don't think I'm going to trade anything else, uh, maybe with EVFM if it does something really nice like a bull flag. But maybe not like the one I was thinking here, but something much larger. Otherwise, that's all I have for right now. All right, it is 6.28 p.m. and I am here to call it off. Overall, I'm going to be up on the day $8.13. But there was a lot of opportunity. I think I did pretty well in the morning, but I feel pretty upset that I missed out on EVFM. And this one was a very nice setup. Ideally, um, you know, I was right then and there when it was happening, the break past 76. Maybe if I had a few more minutes, I could have prepared and had the right amount of size and the convention to take the trade. Then to just get back on my computer, see it, and just immediately buy without having, um, I think, a little bit of a background first. And then it did do the bull flag I was thinking about, and I didn't take that trade. I wasn't there when this happened, unfortunately, either. It even offered like an inverse head and shoulders here, a shoulder head and shoulder it went from the 90s as high as this $1 level. So that was another opportunity there. And then you can say this one was another one, shoulder, head, shoulder. And this one went from the 90s to much higher to the 120. So that was pretty impressive. And then I also missed out on this one with TXTM. So yeah, I feel pretty bad that I missed out. But at least I was on the right track and at least they could have worked out. But it is a scary thing to think that maybe, you know, the next few days or whatever, I have a losing trade. And, you know, these trades would have helped me a lot, you know, stay in the green compared to maybe missing on a few setups and then taking a few that don't work out. Then to just take all the good setups out there and then be really well off in that sense. So, yeah, that, that was a pretty nice one with TXTM, although it still looks kind of weird on this chart, if you ask me. I mean, it could be like a cup and handle but i don't really like that pattern too much this was pretty impressive same thing with um evfm and my alarm turned on let me let me turn it off and i'll be back
Alright, I am back, and that was pretty much about it. LCLP never really did get above the 18 sub penny level, and that was the same case with GEGI. Both of these just didn't do it, but maybe over the next few days, sure. But I was just in it for the day trading pattern, especially with GEGI. There wasn't really anything interesting with these other ones, nothing that I would have really have taken. I would have liked KRFG if it had like a more convincing panic to trade but yeah that's pretty much it for today um a few good trades but there were definitely a lot of opportunities that i could have been a part of and hopefully that can be something to push me to trade the next time i see a setup like that um you know seeing more examples of it working out and also remembering what the pain is like to miss out on a pretty good setup as well